Good morning, everybody. Morning, everyone. You probably guessed what the theme of our services this morning from those uh, from that opening 
uh, song. It's the Great Commandments, uh, Love God, Love One Another. And Julia is going to be uh, bringing us her take on that from the Matthew passage, which is going to be read later on in our service. Uh, before we begin our worship, we've got some notices. It wouldn't be Anglican without notices. Uh, just to say that um, uh, we, we celebrate with Debbie her ordination yesterday. Uh, Jill and I were able to be present uh, representing the whole church. And what an amazing uh, service it was, even though it was very different from ordinations I've been to in the past. But we have another um, uh, moment in the life of the church with somebody marking the spot of a transition into their ministry. And that's Sue Johnson's licensing, which will take place on October 27th. She's having a, a private licensing uh, with the bishop, um, but we are going to welcome her um, as our uh, pastoral assistant uh, at Cafe Church. Uh, next week, in fact, via Zoom. So uh, the service next Sunday morning at 10.30, Cafe Church will be a Zoom service so that we can welcome Sue in her new role. The week after that is, of course, Remembrance Sunday. And that's going to be very different this year because there will be no Civic Square um, gathering, there will be no parade, and there'll be no parade service in St Thomas. Uh, instead, we're putting everything together online <clears throat> and we're, as well as remembering those who fell in conflicts. We're also remembering our current front line and those serving on it, which is the NHS, care homes and the like. So uh, traditionally, this isn't a service that many of our regular congregations turn up to. Uh, we think it's for the town, but actually this is for us all. And I really hope you'll be able to tune in uh, for our Remembrance Day service at 11 o'clock uh, on the November the 8th, not 10.30, 11 o'clock, as we will be beginning probably with a two minute silence. Pastoral radar, are you on it? Um, in these times of uh, social isolation and unable to meet, no coffee after church, it's difficult for Jill and I and other um, people with a pastoral ministry to, to really know what's going on unless you tell us. So if you have got any pastoral problems or difficulties or you just want to chat, um, don't wait for people to know. Tell us um, so that we can pray with you. Uh, we can uh, contact you via phone or, or online. It's important that we don't feel alone during this time, even though we may be on our own. So please help us to know um, if there's any problems uh, in your life or in the lives of others that you know and love. The only lockdown update I have today is that the good news is that after half term, uh, we are re-beginning our youth cell. Um, we're going to be meeting uh, under COVID rules uh, in the coffee lounge. Um, again, under COVID rules, we'll make sure everything's clean and tidy for the next users. Uh, but we're going to be meeting after school just for a catch-up session and to decide as a group uh, where we're going to go, uh, how we're going to be Youth Cell uh, in the months ahead. Uh, we welcome Sarah Guest, who's joining the team um, to lead Youth Cell, and it'll be her first opportunity to meet some of the young people, as it were, face to face. Uh, can I continue to encourage you to join in with Saturday prayers. Um, we do pray, as you know, during the week, 9.30 and 7, but some of us are working and some of us are otherwise engaged during the week. Saturday morning is an opportunity for us to come together as the body of Christ to intercede for our world, which certainly needs it. So please do join us at 9.30 on Saturday mornings. We're not using the daily office as such on Saturdays, doing something slightly different, but it is a time for us to come together in prayer. There are some birthdays to highlight. There is um, Gemma Alexander Bloomfield. Her birthday is today. And tomorrow, Tom Foxall celebrates his <clears throat> birthday. So congratulations to both those two. And we pray God's blessing on them as they celebrate yet another trip around the sun. Uh, Father God, thank you for birthdays and for celebrations. Please be with Gemma and Tom as they celebrate their birthdays. Amen. And some sad news. Um, some of us will remember Roger Stukani, um, who visited our parish some years ago. It happened to be the time when the, the, the then academy was opening, and it was around about this time, Remembrance. Um, he remembered the cold, and, uh, but he, he was a blessing to us, even though at that stage in English wasn't all that grand. But very sadly and tragically, uh, Rogers died in a car accident um, just over a week ago, and his funeral was last week thanks to Jill Blaine for these photographs so we just pause to remember Rogers to give thanks for his life and for his 
all too brief sojourn on this planet and for his time with us those years ago and to pray for his family and for his congregations and for all who knew and loved him. Father, thank you for Rogers. Take him into your company and take him into your presence, we pray. Amen. Amen. So that's uh, all our notices for this morning. Let's just pause before we go into our opening prayer and let God come close. So our opening prayer. May the unity of the Godhead, Father, Son and Spirit, be at the centre of our meeting and, and bind these hearts as one. one. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord for this community of faith. Surround us in your love. For those unable to be here online. Surround them in your love. For all who turn to you in prayer. Surround them in your love. And so we move into our song worship. Our opening song is Your Love is Amazing. So now we turn to the Bible's songbook, to the Psalms. And as is our custom, as I read the Psalm, do feel free to join in with the verses that mean something to you or which you feel the Spirit is prompting you to sing, to say rather. When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. I used that psalm at our APCM last week and it looks back to God's blessing. It looks for God in the present and it recognises that there is a harvest yet to come, though there may be struggles along the way. But what the psalm reminds us is, is that God is always with us because God love, God's love never fails us. So we continue to worship God by recognising the words of the next song, the amazing love of God for us. Here is love, vast as the 
the ocean, love and kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Of God's mercy, flow a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured in sails from above. The heavens peace and perfect justice, kiss the guilty world in love. Well, that's uh, perhaps an, uh, an unfamiliar setting of a familiar song, but as we think about what that song was saying in its refrain, no love is greater than the love of the Lord. And we can be confident of that in all our doings with him. So we turn now to our liturgy and we begin with a prayer of preparation to the God who loves us totally and therefore from whom we do not need to hide. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so as we come to our time of confession, we do so coming to the God who is only too eager to forgive us. When Adam and Eve hid from God in the garden, it's because their sin had made them fearful of God. But when we confess our sins, then perfect love casts out fear. And we are able to re-embrace the God who made us, who died for us, 
and who has a great future planned for us. Of course, we begin our prayers of confession with the words from our reading this morning. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so we say together our confession prayer. Most Most merciful merciful God, Father of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ, we we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have have not loved loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Loving Christ, hanged on a tree, yet risen in the morning, scatter the sin from our souls as the mist from the hills. Begin what we do, inform what we say, redeem who we are. For in Christ we place our hope, our great hope, our living hope, this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. And now before we have our reading, which is brought to us this morning by Carol Smith, we have the special prayer set for today, the Collect. Let's say this together. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we We may enter enter the unfailing unfailing joy of of Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Matthew 22, verses 34 to 46, the greatest commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, Thank you very much, Carol, for that reading. Let's pray together. Lord, as we reflect on your word this morning, open our ears, inform our minds, and renew our hearts to serve you afresh. Amen. Well, here at McGuinness Mansions, every day starts with the same liturgical exchange. I open with, have you let Merlin cat out? At what time? And would you like a cup of tea? And Gordon's response in bold is, yes, about 5.30, and yes, please. The words are automatic and predictable, and sometimes we hardly know we're saying them. Well, this morning's reading echoes words we hear in our Sunday service week by week, just after the prayer of preparation. Jesus commands that we are to love God with all our hearts, souls, mind and strength, and our neighbours as ourselves. And perhaps some weeks these words hold our attention, on others they may wash over us as they come and go, But this morning we're going to stay with them and take a little bit of a closer look. In Matthew's Gospel, these words that Jesus speaks are his reply to the Pharisees' question, 
which of God's commandments given in the scriptures is the most important? Well, there are no fewer than 613 commands recorded in Leviticus, and weighing up where they came from in the spiritual league table was a matter for much theological debate. What would this upstart Rabbi Jesus say to that question? Would he agree with the super spiritual Pharisees that you shall love the Lord your God with all you have was in the top slot, thus proving them right? Or would another one be his pick, thus showing himself up as guilty of sacrilege? Theirs was not an innocent inquiry. Well, at first, Jesus seems to be on message. He's gone for, you shall love the Lord your God, for number one. But then he adds in, and love your neighbour as yourself. It's a tie. The Pharisees don't know what to do about that. Jesus declares that the good life involves both a vertical dimension, a relationship of obedience to God, and a horizontal dimension of love in relationship to one another and ourselves. When these interlinked commandments are in place and aligned, the fulfilling of all God's commandments flows as they were intended to do, expressing the law's righteousness and prophetic justice. The Pharisees have pulled these apart, trying to finesse the purity of a pious, vertical, spiritual dimension. But on the horizontal, just being preoccupied with a loveless nitpicking at the detail of keeping God's laws. I've said they didn't know what to do with what Jesus says to them, but actually they soon do. The next time the Pharisees appear, it is to arrest Jesus. And within days, a horizontal and a vertical dimension is made in wood, and Jesus is crucified on it. The ultimate act of obedience to the Father and love of humankind. On the other side of the cross and Jesus' resurrection, we hear his words, from quite a different place. The new covenant with God's people has dawned in the power of the spirit, but Jesus commands us to still hold these uh, commands of his. So what do his words say to us today? We're going to focus particularly on two words, heart and love. Jesus calls us to love God with all our heart. Now, I don't know what that word heart says to you. In our culture, our first thoughts might be the red hearts on Valentine's Day cards or little heart oak icons floating around on Facebook, symbols of warm or romantic feelings. Or we might see the heart as an organ, particularly if it's working, is causing us concern. But when Jesus refers to the heart, he means much more. In the Bible, The heart is the central part of the inner person. It's the core of our will and choices, the seat of our passions and values, our nature, our disposition, the orientation of our whole being. One biblical scholar suggests that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind is better translated as you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and that is incorporating your soul and mind. The heart is everything inside us that makes us us, and we're called to love God with all we've got. And what about this word love? What's that about? In our language, love can be for a multitude of recipients, from a partner to a pizza. And we generally view it as being an emotion. Love is a a responsive glow to something or someone that makes us feel good or meets our needs. But there are different kinds of love. The Christian theologian and writer C.S. Lewis has written about the four loves that are described by the ancient Greek words of eros, romantic love, storge, familial love, like a parent for a child, philia, brotherly love and um, affection, and agape, the unconditional sacrificial love like God has for us. And uh, no prizes for guessing that Jesus is talking about agape love in this commandment. Far more powerful than a nice feeling, this love is a deliberate choice to worship and obey God and to act in the best interest of those around us and ourselves as well. Such love can involve much joy, much emotion of joy and tenderness, but it does go beyond emotion in the service of another. 
We don't always feel glowing when we do something for someone else, do we? Or on a spiritual high when we come together for worship, online or face to face. We may not feel warm as we get up in the night to attend to a sick child, or on our way to fulfill a commandment we've made, a commitment that we've made that gets in the way of what we want to do. But this is love. Love is a four-letter word. And it could be described in other four-letter words too. Time for the other. Risk in openness and vulnerability. Acts. Love is what we do. The Acts of the Apostles is the love story of the early church's walk with God as they share his gift of life with others. Sometimes love is not glamorous. There's a beautiful poem that UA Fanfort writes about love that starts, there is a kind of love called maintenance, which stores the WD-40 and knows when to use it, which checks the insurance and doesn't forget the milkman, which remembers to plant bulbs, which answers letters, which knows the way the money goes, which deals with dentists. This, the poet says, is the sensible side of love. And if that seems ordinary and down to earth, then we go right across to the other end of the spectrum, to the very sacrificial and costly side. I've always remembered how in his book, Return from Tomorrow, the writer Ricky Sherrill, who was a doctor serving with the US forces liberating German concentration camps in June 1945, writes about a remarkable inmate they found at one in Poland. It was a Polish prisoner with a fairly unpronounceable Polish name, so the American soldiers nicknamed him Wild Bill Cody because of the big Western-style moustache that he sported. He was an amazing man as he helped the Americans with the prisoners. Not only was he fluent in many languages, he seemed to have boundless energy and compassion for everyone around him. They found out he'd been in the camp six years, six years in the same conditions as his fellow prisoners, and yet he seemed far healthier and more full of life than they did. And one day, over a mug of tea, the author found out his secret. Wild Bill said, we lived in the Jewish section of Warsaw. My wife, our two daughters, and our three boys. When the Germans reached our street, they lined everyone up against a wall and opened up with machine guns. I begged to be allowed to die with my family, but because I spoke German, they put me in a work group. I had to decide right then whether to let myself hate the soldiers who had done this. Actually, it was an easy decision. I was a lawyer. In my practice, I had seen too often what hate could do to people's minds and bodies. Hate had just killed the six people who mattered most to me in the world. I decided then that I would spend the rest of my life, whether it was a few days or many years, loving every person I came into contact with. Love was his incredible choice. And in Wild Bill, the author, who'd had a profound encounter with Christ when he himself had been in heart surgery a year or so before, saw not just a power that had kept this man well, but the presence of the Christ he'd met at his hospital bedside. Well, we're not living in the extreme circumstances of this wild Bill Cody, but we are in trying times. As we continue through this pandemic into winter, facing recession in this changed world around us, can we make that choice again? Reaffirm our commitment to loving God with all our being and our neighbours as ourselves and discovering what that might mean here and now. To seek ways of staying close to God so that we know how to love one another through these times. Love is a simple word, a simple word to say, but a deep word to do wherever we find ourselves. We see love made practical perfectly in Jesus. And we see how love can mean dining with outcasts, speaking uncomfortable truth, expressing tender compassion, overturning tables in a temple, confronting and comforting, outmanoeuvring the manipulative, but allowing ourselves to be powerless in the face of an enemy for the Father's sake. A tall order? Absolutely. Why do you think we hear Jesus' commandments read just before confession? 
but we needn't be dismayed. Jesus' commandments are not an impossible bar we have to strive to reach to be accepted. They're an invitation to the good life, the God life, the life he's always planned for us. We can't achieve that with a white knuckle ride of strenuous effort. We need a change of heart. But Jesus is the heart surgeon. He has opened up the possibilities of the vertical and horizontal dimensions of fullness in life in him by the power of his spirit. And he's calling us in. So let's pray. Just take a moment to close your eyes and get in touch with your heart. What's going on? What does your heart beat for today? Perhaps it's full, full of joy or heavy with sorrow. Perhaps it's delighting in God or maybe it feels blocked or broken. Perhaps a bit unsettled and distracted. How is it with your heart today? Invite the heart surgeon in. Lord Jesus, perfect heart surgeon, renew our hearts, align them with you. And think of that call, not just to love God, but to love others. Is there someone you're being called to express love to? Are you wanting to reaffirm that choice to love everyone that comes across your path this week? Jesus has also told us, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would bear fruit, fruit that will abide. So Lord, we assent to your choosing and we choose you too. Make our lives fruitful for you, we pray. Amen. In her talk, Julia reminded us that love is something that you do. The four letter word was acts. So as we come now to our time of declaring our faith, we use this creed that Jill has introduced into our worship, a doing creed, <clears throat> a creed where we put love into practice. And we start with all of us saying the first line. We, we believe, believe in, in the, the gift, gift of, of creation. creation. God created us and this beautiful world. He has given us the gift of being creative too. We, we believe, believe in, in the gift of love. God loves us and gave his only son for us. He wants us to use the gift of love towards everyone we meet. We, we believe, believe in, in the, the gift, gift of, of sharing. sharing. Jesus came to earth to share his life with others. He has given us many things and he wants us to share with others. And so we move to our time of intercession. As we pray, I will be uh, leaving spaces for us to offer our own intercessions. When I say the words, Lord, hear us, you respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Holy God, though this world depends on your grace, it is governed and tended by mortals. We pray for those who walk the corridors of power in the parliaments of this and other lands, whose judgments we value or fear. We bring to God, therefore, this morning uh, the coming 
general um, presidential election in, in the USA, our own government's handling of the pandemic and its negotiations with Brexit, local government and local leaders. We pray for Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, and his cabinet. We pray for the SAGE group, and we pray for listening ears in those who have to make decisions that will affect all of us. Can I invite you to name before God, through the comments box, leaders, local and national and global, who you wish to pray for this morning. Pray for Andy Burnham, the mayors of our northern cities. We pray for Justin Madders, our local MP. We pray for leaders of councils. We pray for Joe Biden and Donald Trump and we pray that they would be mindful that their words have a direct effect on the actions of others in their country. Father, as we pray for leaders, we pray that they may always consider those they represent, make decisions with courage and integrity, and resist any temptation to abuse the trust placed in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who hold key positions in the worlds of finance, business and industry, whose decisions may profit some or impoverish many. Let's bring to God the companies large and small of our own region, international trade, Brexit, anything where financial and corporate and business decisions have an impact on other people's lives. We pray for Airbus, Stanlaw Refinery, Vauxhalls, and for the larger international corporations that stand behind them. We pray for local businesses struggling to make ends meet, for those who are self-employed and may be tempted to cut corners in terms of their taxes and other um, responsibilities because money is tight and business is slow. We pray for employers making decisions about those they employ and their struggles to keep them in jobs. We pray for the Port Arcades in the process of being sold and for the future employment of the Arcades staff. Father, we're conscious that business in this world is often directed by people whose names we do not know and whose faces we've never seen. So we pray for them as we pray that they may always value people higher than profit, that they may never impose burdens on the poor, which they would not carry themselves, that they may never divorce money from morality or ownership from stewardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we pray for those in the caring professions at this very difficult time for the NHS and other practitioners of medicine. We pray that they might always see the people in front of them, not as a difficulty or a problem, but as a person. We pray also for those who make decisions regarding the nation's health and welfare. And particularly we pray, Lord, for that balance between the economic health of the country and the well-being of its citizens. So let's pray for those we know who work in the health service, also those who are part of the management of the health service, for our local hospitals and practices, dentists and the like, 
and let's name them before God now. Lord, I pray for our dentist in Little Sutton. For the Cottage Hospital and Whitby Practice. For Sally and Karen. For Doreen. For Ruth Wilson. For the medical experts who are advising the government and whose models concerning the spread of COVID are so crucial to understanding how to contain the disease, even if that means controversial lockdowns. Lord, we're aware that it's human beings that run the NHS, but you are behind them, seeking to guide their decisions with your wisdom. May they always sense the sanctity of life and every person's uniqueness. May they help and heal by their interest as well as their skill. And in this particular period of time, this particular emergency, may they be saved from tiredness and an excess of demands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let's now remember those for whom we are responsible and to whom we are accountable in what we do today. Remembering what Julia said to us about love being an action and love being something that we show to others, even when it's sometimes difficult to do so. We lift to God those who are on our hearts, those who don't yet know God's love for them, those who are sick in hospital or at home, those who have COVID-19, those who have long-term disability, either physical or mental. Let's just spend some time naming for God, not necessarily going into details, the people on our hearts today. Lord, I pray for Isabella. For Pete recovering from heart surgery. From, for Vicky and Robin, recovering from COVID. Praying for you to protect the vulnerable in our church and community from this uh, nasty virus. Pray for those who are grieving because of the loss of loved ones, thinking especially of the family of Josephine Higgerson. We continue to pray for Steph and Tony and William and Gabriella. And we pray for that joyful burden that is Gabriella to grow healthily and beautifully and be a joy to her parents and indeed to her brother. Father, those we've named out loud, as it were, on the chat box or in the quietness of our hearts, may they always be in our thoughts and may we show to them the thoughtfulness, the tolerance, the kindness and the love of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayers. And if today we might be the means by which you answer the prayers of others, then may you find us neither deaf nor defiant, but keen to fulfil your purpose. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. And so we say the second part of the creed uh, that we... Um, said be, we began before our prayers together we, we believe, believe in, in the, the gift, gift of, of forgiveness. forgiveness Jesus died on the cross so we can be forgiven he wants us to use the gift of forgiveness towards those who have wronged us we, we believe, believe in, in the, the gift, gift of, of prayer. prayer the Holy Spirit of God helps us to pray in Jesus name he wants us to use the gift of prayer in worship 
and service to others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. So we come now to, um, uh, we begin to make our journey towards the Lord's table as we celebrate together and apart um, what he did for us in the symbols of bread and wine. Before we do that, of course, we have the peace. And uh, can I encourage you, wherever you are, um, to share the peace with those around you. And if you're on your own, then God shares his peace with you and we share his peace with you as well, though we cannot see you. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus came, oh sorry, on the night he rose again, Jesus came to his disciples who were huddled together for fear of the Jews. And he said to them, peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. And so as we share the peace with one another and as we receive the peace of God into our own hearts, so we prepare to gather at the Lord's table. Our offertory song, and it is an offertory song because we're offering ourselves to God to serve his purposes, to be his hands and feet in the week ahead, is also a reminder to us that um, the giving of the church is part of the way we express our love to one another. And I want to encourage you to go on giving um, because that is an act of love that enables us to continue as the people of God in the Anglican Church of Ellesmere Port. So our offertory hymn is, This is the Air I Breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence Living in me This is my daily bread This is my daily bread
so we follow the words in our service. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks and, and praise. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and a command rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. On the night on which he was betrayed, and as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, This cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, the produce of the earth and fruit of human labour, for in these Jesus has promised to be present. Through these Christ can make us whole. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfils your purpose, O Lord, we fall silent and we remember him who came because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we now conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. And so we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let's share together with those around us. And if we're on our own, let's share virtually with everyone who's in the room with you, even though you can't see them, as we celebrate the love of God shown in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And now let's, uh, as has become our custom, express our thanksgiving to God um, through this time. Can I encourage you to um, put your prayers, uh, your thank you prayers into the comments box so that we can have this time together um, sharing um, our blessings with one another, showing our love for each other by telling each other through thanksgiving how God has loved us.
So we do thank you, Lord, for all the good things you've given to us. And as we come to the end of our service now, Lord, may we go into this week knowing that you go with us, knowing that your love will sustain us, knowing that you are with us always until the end of this age. Amen. So as we come towards the end of our service now, we have our closing prayer. God who calls us from wilderness places into sacred spaces in green pastures that you have prepared for us, to, to you belongs, belongs our praise. God who calls us into different difficult places and to darker spaces where our trust is in the strength that you provide, to, to you, you alone belongs our, belongs our praise. God who calls us, leads us, guides and shields us, to, to you belongs, belongs our, our praise. praise. Our final song is not one that we know, it's a new one, but as you'll hear, the words are entirely appropriate for what we've been thinking about today. Um, the, one, the wonderful thing about online worship is you can sing as if nobody hears you, because nobody can. So this is a new song. Uh, it's quite simple. You'll pick it up as we go through. But if you don't, just listen to it and let the words uh, impact upon your heart. I've been running in circles, jumping the hurdles, getting caught in that rush of doing so much. I'm feeling kind of worn out. All this checking the boxes, trying to be flawless, has me spinning my head, catching my breath, too afraid to slow down. I tell myself to keep this up, that God wants more than just my love. But I've been complicating things, it's just like me to overthink. Gotta keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero. Cause it all comes down to this love God and love Can be loud, cause love is what it's all about. I tell myself to keep this up, that all God wants is just my love. No more complicating things, no more need to overthink. Gotta keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero, cause it all comes down to this love, God, and love. Changes lives, love is all we need to make things right. Gotta keep it real simple. It's really so simple. Gotta keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero. Cause it all comes down to this love, God. So we've come to the end of our service. Um, but it's going to finish with the Irish blessing. Um, I've chosen this. It's, it's, like, it's in the, the theme of the many blessings we've used in these services of multiple voices, but slightly different, although it includes the ironic blessing. Um, it's, it comes at the end. But what's significant about this is in Ireland, where religion has divided people so deeply in the past, this 
blessing represents the churches of Ireland coming together in love to bless the country through this blessing. So I thought it was an appropriate way to finish our service um, where we've been celebrating God's love for us and God's call to love him back and to love one another as we love ourselves. So let's enjoy the Irish blessing. Be 
Christ be with you. Christ within you. Christ be The Lord met the lift of his face, and the goodness of his heart to be brecht upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Niech Cię Pan błogosławi i strzeże. Faka să lumineze fața Lui peste And so we come to the end of our service. May God be with you this coming week. And as he blesses you, may you bless others. Amen. So we move now to a time of sharing over coffee. Um, so please do share your news with one another. God bless. Thanks for joining us this morning and hopefully see some of you tomorrow at 9.30 morning prayers. Bye for now.